Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's look at what goes into a set exercise. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Now, before we get to the field video, what is a set? A set stands for simulated emergency test, or some will call it simulated emergency training. And it is the ARRL's primary national emergency exercise and is designed to assess the skills and preparedness of amateur radio emergency service or ARIES volunteers, as well as those affiliated with other organizations involved in emergency and disaster response. So what's the purpose of a set exercise? It can help individuals become familiar with procedures utilized by the local group. In addition to that, it is also a great time for everyone to get a chance to play with the equipment that may have been assembled either in a trailer that uh, you can use for a mobile deployment or maybe it's the radio room or radio area of the local emergency operations center. It can also give individuals the opportunity to gain net control uh, experience under more controlled conditions than what you may find during an actual event. And it also allows operators to gain experience with modes they may not be familiar with. So maybe they're a great net control operator, but they just don't have experience at a Winlink station passing emails over HF. And these exercises also help to discover deficiencies in the equipment or methods that the group has planned on using. So let's take a minute to hear from Preston, who is acting as the incident commander during this exercise. Hey guys, I'm here with Preston, KN4CCQ this morning. Preston, I appreciate you taking a minute to uh, stop and talk to us. I just wanted to know a little bit about what's going on here today. What can we expect from today's exercise? Yes, sir, no problems. Like I said, KN4CCQ and uh, part of the Rutherford County Aries Group. What we're gonna do today is try to deploy stations throughout the county and pass priority traffic back to net control. Now, what's going to be the modes of communication we use today? Uh, today, we're going to use two meter mainly. Okay. Uh, we are going to pass some HF traffic digitally okay. or attempt to send digital traffic, okay. HF. Outstanding. Now, for two meters, are you going to be using primarily simplex, primarily local repeaters? We're going to use the primary repeater, uh, 145.23 Laverne repeater. It's got an emergency backup. We're going to use uh, Tiger Hill repeater. I think it's also 145. 1.7 and it has a battery backup as well and then we're going to try to use simplex if we can get enough participation it, it takes quite a bit of participation to get simplex working yeah because you're going to have to probably go to relying on relays at that point to reach some of your far, farther spots out in the county right yes, especially mobile or handheld operation it takes quite a few okay now you also mentioned digital traffic over hf uh what means are you going to be trying to use to to pass those to pass those messages from one operator to the next. We'll try and use Winlink. Winlink, okay, yes. outstanding. Vera, it's Vera HF on Winlink. And will you be using peer-to-peer -peer, uh, contacts or are you gonna be relying on a gateway that you're gonna relay through outside, the, a gateway that's outside the area? We will rely on the gateway outside the area. Okay, outstanding. Preston, I appreciate you taking a minute. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. To kick things off that morning, there was a brief meeting where operators were given a script that contained some emergency traffic or emergency exercise traffic that they were going to pass during the event. And then those operators were deployed to various areas around the county. The remaining members started setting up the trailer, getting all of the radios fired up, and once that trailer was set up and everything was ready to go, they went ahead and activated a net. And within just a few minutes, the first messages started coming through. Yes, exercise, exercise. I'm in Smyrna and uh, the traffic lights are out at Sam Ridley Parkway and Stonecrest 
Parkway. Eastbound traffic is backed up to Interstate 24. Now, each of these exercises can have a different set of goals. Uh, one goal may be to try to run everything off of generator power. Maybe another group tries to run everything off of solar and battery power. You may want to test the footprint of a local repeater, or you may want to test simplex range in the event that the repeater itself went down. Which is going to work better in your area? Would you prefer relying on 2 meter simplex or maybe HF with some Invis antennas? It all depends and until you start testing those different scenarios, it's hard to say which is going to work best. Now for this particular exercise, the primary goals were to test the footprint of the local repeater throughout the county from various spots. Could they uh, reliably get into the repeater with a 50 watt uh, mobile rig? Could they accomplish the same task with a 5 watt HT? Since it had been a while since they had done one of these emergency drills, they also wanted to test the trailer and the equipment within. And finally, they wanted to test the ability to pass uh, messages using the Winlink system. Were there deficiencies found? Yes, and that brings us to the After Action Report. The After Action Report is a critical part of this training. It allows the group to gather together. Now, in this case, the group gathered uh, on the Monday evening following the emergency training, and they got together and talked about what worked and what didn't. A couple of takeaways that they discovered from the training event was one, uh, the radios. They had multiple two meter radios inside the trailer, but those radios did not have matching frequencies programmed into both particular radios. So radio A may be on one frequency if you're using memory channel 4, and radio B was on a different frequency, and it was decided that those radios should probably be programmed identically. They also found that uh, there was a lack of an inventory list, or at least a lack of an updated inventory list, in the trailer and they're going to work on that before the next training exercise. Now while these events kind of focus on emergency preparedness and emergency training, the same skills that are utilized for these tests can be applied to other areas of amateur radio. Maybe your local club or your local Aries group uh, wants to support a bike ride. Let's just take that for an example. Well, you could use that uh, Aries trailer, similar to what you saw in the video, and deploy that out to be your base camp and your net control operations, where everyone else could relay their traffic back through that command center. Those same skills could also apply maybe to a parade or a foot race. There's a lot of different instances that amateur radio operators help support with communications, and these skill sets apply to all of them. So hopefully this video gives you a little bit of insight to what is a set exercise and what goes into a set exercise. Be sure to give us a thumbs up if you found this video helpful, and we will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.